Good morning. I'm Carlton Sharp, pastor of Faith Christian Center Church right here in Beaumont, Texas. And we're here on what's happening in, in our neighborhood. And today my special guests are Miss Mary Citizen and Miss Karen Morris. Welcome, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Thank hey. You. Well, listen, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Okay. Well, you know me already. I know you already. <laughs> I'm from Beaumont, Texas, born and raised. Uh, we came out today just to uh, talk about financial services with you providing for our communities. Um, when I moved away, and I'm in Houston, my heart is to come back to Beaumont and educate. That's right, that's educate right. Educate our people to a point where they can be comfortable and live a great life. Wonderful. So Karen, where are you from? I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. NOLA! <laughs> <laughs> from the Big Easy. <laughs> the Big Easy, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so how did you come this way? Uh, met Mary, this wonderful lady, uh, through a friend of mine, a guy that I actually went through high, to high school with, and okay. uh, she came down to my office in New Orleans and saw what we were doing and was just so impressed with the things that we taught and wanted to become a part of it, and she brought me to Texas. <laughs> wonderful. Now, now, today we're going to talk about financial literacy, uh, and then we're, we're going to talk about the other 90. Cause, cause, Absolutely. Because hey, watch this now, because they should be giving 10% to the church. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and they tied. So we're going to talk about the other 90. We're going to talk about budgeting. We're going to talk about how to pay yourself first and, and debt management and, and, and life insurance. Okay. Okay? okay. So, so, so now, now tell us, have, have you noticed that in our community that, that people are not prepared uh, on the long term for life? Very much. I have noticed that I have my own tax business, and I noticed that when they come to me, and it's crazy, and I'm not speaking or talking ill will, but they will have a $2,500 uh, $2, purse and don't have $500 in their savings account. Wow. And for me, I had the wow factor, and so I started talking to them about financial services and this is the avenue we need to go down, and I'm here to assist you. You know, I'm reasonable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not here to make the money all, you know, <laughs> just for myself. I want everybody, if I prosper, everybody. And, that, and, that, and that's, that's the good news uh, about what, what you're doing here today. You're trying to make sure that the people have the literacy, the understanding, yes. you know. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to use scripture all the time, but the Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge it's because people don't know how to financially place themselves in a good position. And so that's what you ladies are here today to talk about. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, to quote another scripture, the Bible talks about leaving an inheritance for your children's yeah. children. And yeah. so when we are spending on things that are, I, I read a t-shirt before that said, I'm spending my children's inheritance, my child's inheritance, it's not funny. You know, because we should leave something for those that are left behind. Yeah, it, 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 most times, it, 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 I've heard it said, because I got mine, you got to get yours. Yeah. Why well, our children shouldn't have to start when we started. No, they should right. be all in a better position financially yeah. in, in, in every other aspect of their lives yeah. uh, than we were when we got started. Absolutely. So, so now, now let's, start, let's, talk, let's talk about some insurance, because, right. okay. because most people in our community don't have insurance. Wow. And if they, if, if they do have insurance, it's not enough to cover the expenses that will come after the fact. So, so why don't you talk about that? Absolutely. Um, we talk about the fact that in our community, either one or two things happen. Either you live too long or you die too soon. And <laughs> you live too long or die too soon. <laughs> right. And so what we mean by that is we mean that if you die with someone else dependent on your income, Husbands don't think about dying and leaving a wife behind. Parents don't think about dying and leaving children behind financially. And so it's like you die too soon because they're still dependent on you. Right. And, and, and so you have, you have a, 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 a nice graphic that you use to, to show us uh, how people need to look at things because they still have insurance, they still have taxes, food, kids, bills, debt. So let's put that graphic up and you can talk, talk, talk us through it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things that I talk to people about when I sit down with them is that they insure their cell phones, you know, they insure their cars wow. and their homes. And how can you have insurance on your cell phone and not on yourself? Uh -huh. You know, not on your family or not on the income that provides for the family. And so what this graphic shows is that if you're in a household where the dad's making $30,000 a year and the mom's making $30,000 a year, that's a $60,000 a year household. Right, and that right. $60,000 goes out. Don't we all know it comes in and it goes out? And, and, and like you say, you, you got insurance, you got taxes, you got food, you got kids, you got the bills, you got your debt, you got your car, you got your mortgage. Absolutely. And the question that I ask, Pastor, which one of those bills 
die or, or go away when the breadwinner dies? Do wow. any of those bills diminish when the breadwinner dies? No. So on your next graphic, you, you show that if the father would leave and, and, and pass away, that the, the, the wife or the mom still has the responsibility of taking care of all of those things. Absolutely, absolutely. She just lost not only love and affection and support, but she lost an income of $30,000 a year that was helping pay for the mortgage and the, raise the kids. And so now mom is actually trying to run a $60,000 household on $30,000. Wow. And so that's a recipe for disaster. And so, and so, and what we have seen in our neighborhood is that then the mom goes out and get a second and a third job. Yes. But then the question needs to be asked, then who's watching the kids? Watch, and that's one of the things I ask people all the time. If, yeah, I, I talked to one lady in my office building. She told me she had three jobs. I didn't know you could have three full-time jobs. Wow. And she told me she there. worked a day job. And this lady actually lost her husband. She told me she works a day job, an evening job, and a weekend job. And I, I, in, in all sincerity, I just had to ask. I said, I'm so, you know, I'm so sorry for your loss, but my question was, who's watching the children? So, you know, when you leave your family in that position, even for single parents, when we die in our community, we leave two, three, four, sometimes five kids on grandma or wow. mom. Wow. And you never thought that I'm going to leave my mother the responsibility or my grandmother the responsibility of raising four kids with no money. Yeah. That's a financial disaster for your, for your mother and for your children. Yeah. And so we just need to think about what we're doing, and this becomes more important now because it's not just about frying fish to bury me or go funding a GoFund for my burial. I have to think about those that I leave behind. And, and so, so one of the things that you know, we need to make sure we look at is instead of having uh, $200 tennis shoes, Yes. Or five hundred dollar rims. Yes. That we might need to look at investing in, in, in life insurance to provide for our families long term. Absolutely. So, so now you have what 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 is called the dime theory. Tell us about the dime theory. The dime theory is definitely something that was not taught in our community. Okay. The dime. What was taught in our community by people who knocked on our doors and sold our grandparents and our mother's insurance was they sold burial policies, ah. which was simply enough to bury me if I died. My mother, I have 16 brothers, 15 brothers and sisters. Whoa! And so what's happening in New Orleans? <laughs> <laughs> so, in my, so in my case, my mom could get in the car, casket with my dad and he died because she couldn't raise 16 kids without my father's in income. But of course, nobody taught her about the dime theory, okay? Okay. And so what the dime theory says is that if you die prematurely, your debt doesn't, uh, can we go back to the graphic? Yeah, we go your, back. Your debt doesn't die with you. So your debt needs to be taken care of because if you have a 401k or you own a home, though, your debt is going to be paid before your family gets their right. inheritance. Wow. Okay, so most people don't know that. Of course, the, the smallest part of life insurance, with, which we as a people have been taught was the only part of life insurance, was burial. You do have to be buried, but you don't need to put $50,000 in the ground, right? Wow. A reasonable burial. Okay? Right, right, right. But the most important part of the dying theory is income replacement. And there's absolutely no one that I've sat down with in 25 years that told me somebody talked to them about income replacement. Uh -huh. So in the event, if you look at the, at the uh, graphic, if a person only makes $1,000 a month, uh -huh. that's $12,000 a year, they would need $120,000 worth of life insurance to replace that $12,000 a year coming into the house. Wow. And I sit down past with, with folks making $5,000 a month and $7,000 a month and have no life insurance wow. or very little life insurance. Wow. Okay? And so then we also say that the largest expense that the average family has is either their rent or their mortgage. And so you don't want to leave your wife struggling with a mortgage by herself or your husband struggling with a mortgage by himself when both of the incomes were helping pay for that mortgage. Right. So we want to make sure that that mortgage is paid off so that family's home could be secured. Right. For the future. So how many people, even when our parents left us houses, the children lost the house because they could not afford the upkeep of the house or afford to pay the mortgage on the house. Mm -hmm. So this way you leave them a house, you know you also left them enough money to pay off the mortgage. Wow. And that family house, that now that family home is secured in the family forever. And the last one is an education fund for your kids. You know, I, I ask people all the time, if you died prematurely, would you still want your children to be able to go to college? Wow. Absolutely, I yeah. do. So you need to make sure that part of that money, part of that money 
actually funds an education for your children. And one of, the, one of the most unique things about our company, I think, is that we're not only insurance licensed, we're securities licensed, so when we deliver a debt claim, we're there to financially instruct that person to make sure that part of those funds are put away for the future. Yeah, and, and, and most people think that the policy that they have to bury their, their loved one is enough to sustain them yes. after the funeral is over. Yes, absolutely. Because after that Saturday is over, Monday begins. Yes. Monday begins. Monday begins. And I actually tell people, I said, I think some of that crying and hollering and screaming at those funerals <laughs> is like, okay, his check stopped Friday and my rent is due Monday, right? Right, right. And so right. it's like, how am I going to make him now that he, make it now that he's gone? And, and, and really, but she's gone. Yeah, really, it, it, and it's not that expensive to uh, to be able to provide for your family long term. No, it's not. So, so the, your next graphic that you have that that, that shows us uh, uh, the the death benefit uh, from two different policies. Yes. So, talk to us about those policies. Okay. One of the things in our community, especially, but in America on a whole, we're typically sold the wrong type of insurance, and that's why we don't have the type of coverage we need. We don't have enough to pay off a mortgage and provide income replacement because we're sold very expensive life insurance, okay? And so what we teach is to show a person the difference between what we call a cash value life insurance policy, which I would probably say 90% of the people that I meet have because it's sold as a benefit. And so in this graphic, you see that if the husband had $150,000 on them and the wife had $150,000 on her, they would be spending about $298 a month. Uh -huh. Okay, for our, in our community, we already know we're not spending three hundred dollars a month on life insurance. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. we just can't afford it. And so, when I sit down with people and I show them the difference between a concept called buy term and invest the difference. In this exact situation, the husband and wife could both ha both have three hundred thousand dollars each. The children could be covered because children do need to be covered. They don't bring income in, but nobody wants to fish fry while they're grieving a child. Yeah, I yeah. think the worst thing I've ever seen is someone in grief and then have to stop and say, how do I pay for this? Uh -huh. Okay. And so the children have 25000 That's a total of $625,000 worth of life insurance. That's a monthly amount of one twenty-three. Now, in our community, our monthly amount might be about 65, you know, because if they, if, they're younger or right, either they right. don't need that much, right? Mm -hmm. But in that scenario, they take the $175 that we saved them from the other policy, and Pastor, even if they don't have current insurance, we do a budget page and yeah. find out how much they're wasting, Yeah. okay, spending unnecessarily, yeah. and use part of that unnecessary money and fund actually a life insurance policy to protect their family as well as an investment for the future. So so really what you're saying is that that if we if we would do a budget of of what we spend on a monthly basis yes. that we're actually wasting a lot we're of money that we could be investing to, to get insurance uh, and, 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 and make sure that our families are provided for a long term. That's Absolutely. Correct. So so I mean so uh, looking at the two benefit packages, I mean, you could take the $175 that you're difference, the difference, yes. and make an investment yes. and, 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 and get more money back at the cash money. Yes, yes. yes. Wow. Yes, yes. And so in the next graphic, it shows that $175 a month being invested, not saved, because that's another yes. area that we yes. lack in. We save money. Well, we don't really save, but he, when we do we save, save, when we do save, we save in banks that pay us very low interest rate, yeah. uh -huh. but they charge us very high when they lend us the money. That's right. That's now, right. how can you give me 0.5% on my savings and charge me 24.99 on my credit, credit card? card. <laughs> and, you know, 15.99 on my car if my credit is bad, right? Right, right, right. And so that, that's just, it doesn't make sense. They're making more money on our money than we are. So we teach people to invest which the stock market has averaged 10%, and as you can check it out, has averaged 10% since inception, since 1928, and we're still saving at 1%. That 175 investment will grow to almost $700,000. Wow, over a what period of time? That's over a 35, 35 years. So, so look at this for a second. So, so if you are 20 years old, because most of us think that we're gonna live forever, and, and, and I, I, I believe we can live to 120. No, we can't, we can't, we can't. We can't. Uh, look, we, we still look I'm good. <laughs> yeah. So
so, so, but most people wait to the latter part of their lives yes. to invest in, 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 in these type of policies yes. when it's cheaper, much cheaper, when they are in their younger years much to make the investment. Yes. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Yes. We have a client that he's 28 years old was spending $600 a month on life insurance. He came with us, he's now spending 100 for $400,000 more than what he had and he's investing the other 500. Wow. Now he's at 28, can you imagine where he would be at 29? So at 64, yeah. he'll be a multi-millionaire. Yeah. A multi-millionaire by just taking, taking the money knowledgeable he's already yes. spending, yes. Of, of what the market is doing right now yes. And, yes. and also with life insurance. You know, it, it, it doesn't make much sense to me to have all of the shoes, the cars, and all that kind of stuff, and don't have insurance. And don't have insurance. I talk to people all the time. Yeah, I say, look, y'all, we are consumers. We spend money. So it's not true that you can't afford it. The truth is That's you're good. making choices that you're, you're, you're affording something. It's just not the right things. Right. So we teach a need basis want in the seminar, what you actually need versus what you want. Yes. You know, I talked to a young lady, she called me the other day, <laughs> this was about a month ago, she said, oh, I'm struggling, I, I, my life insurance is going to have to go. And I'm very blunt with my people because I love my people. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, sell this from the yeah, pocket, yeah. I sell this from the heart, right? right? right. I've delivered a $360,000 debt claim to a 27-year-old widow, right? She bought a Mercedes, but y'all know we like Mercedes. <laughs> she bought a home and she invested, <laughs> she invested. 150,000. She's only, she was 27. That money will turn over every seven years. Wow. She too will be a millionaire before she's 60, but that's because her mom was my agent and our mom educated her daughter to protect the income of her husband. Wow. And so where does that happen if we don't take it to our people who will? Yeah. And, and, and that's why uh, uh, this is so important for those of you who are watching today, that, that, that you have, must understand that you must have financial literacy in order to be successful in life. Yeah. That's why the budgeting portion of, of your seminars that you do, to talk to people about how to budget their money. Yes. You know, because like you say, you'll find a lot of waste in there. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah. the story I was, I was telling, I forgot to finish it. The girl called me, she said, I'm struggling, I think my life insurance is gonna have to go. And my response to her was, yeah, something will have to go, but it won't be your life insurance. Let's start with cable and 400 channels. <laughs> Let's start with my child having an iPhone. Let's yes. start with the two hundred dollar weave and the eighty dollar nails. You pay okay. two hundred dollars for a weave. I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> yes, 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 Pastor. Yes. They're doing it they're every doing day. It. Okay. Wow. So doing you know, it. and I wasn't offensive because I have a relationship with her. And you know what she told me? She said, "You know what, Miss Karen, you're right." She said, "I'm gonna let's." I said, "Let's do the budget again." She said, "I'm gonna look at my budget." And wow. I'm gonna, it, it touched my heart because she received. Right. See, what, what, what people miss that B part of the equation about my people perish for lack of knowledge, that B part of that verse says because they rejected it. They reject it. the knowledge. Exactly. That's right. That's so right. she didn't reject it. She received it. And she said, you know what, because I really want to make sure my child is sick. She has one child. I want to make sure my child is taken care of. Wow. And so that's what we do in our community. Sometimes we got to get down with them yeah. on, on, on <laughs> how we understand, right? And, and, like, <laughs> and, and she, on her, on her behalf of speaking, and one thing about our community, we always say, oh, I don't want you in my business. You don't have business. Right, right. We are here to help you, educate you. We don't care where you are. We want to get you to a place yeah. that you never thought maybe possible even you possible. can be. Absolutely. Because because if you're going to teach me how to set my family up long term, then I mean, then I, I can talk to you. Yeah. Exactly. You and know? I'm finding that more now. More people are way more receptive right. because America's now. in a financial crisis. Families are struggling, and it's middle class families, not just poor people who are struggling. They're living paycheck to paycheck. Most of the people that work with me part-time make $50,000 and $75,000 already on their job, and they're doing this. Wow. You know, so because wow. they believe in the concepts and now, the help. And important, the, the other part of this thing is that you teach people how to pay themselves first. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It, again, I mean, you, you're spending two, she said $2,500 for <laughs> a, a per, $2,500 yes, for a purse per with $2.50 yes. in the purse. They don't even have that to put in the purse. So, so you're actually teaching people how to pay themselves first. Yeah. Yeah, we talk about, you know, paying God, paying yourself, you know, making sure your family. So it's wealth creation and wealth protection. You know, you have to protect the wealth first because you can tell me when you want to die. I mean, when you're going to retire, you can tell me when you want to get out of debt. You can tell me when you want to buy a home, but you cannot tell me when you're going to die. 
So that's the immediate need in all families' lives because it's too often somebody died instantaneously and then we're fish frying and go funding me because you don't get a notice on it. Or, or we're just holding the body for two weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Or a month. <laughs> I've <I> seen somebody <laughs> hold it for a month. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And so because if you budget correctly and you, you, you divide, your, you, you determine or distinguish your needs from your wants, then maybe $80 worth of designs on your fingernails may not be as important. <laughs> as, and I've seen it. I've seen it faster. Yeah, you said $80 on your fingernails. Yes, I've seen you. it. Yeah. It took me, I mean, literally, I would not even pay for extra jail nail. Jail nails cost $15 extra. And I'm sitting next to a single parent with two children, and she's blinged out. And I'm like, and the girl tells her $80. And I go, what? I said, did you just say $80? She's spending $80 no. to have bling out Every two fingernails. Weeks. Pastor, we've got to talk to our people, Pastor. So, so, okay, 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 okay. So, so. If, if, if a person is paying eighty dollars every two weeks, that's hundred and sixty dollars. I can add real quick. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Time. Your policy was only a hundred and twenty-three dollars mm -hmm. for six hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars worth of insurance exactly. for your husband, the wife, and the, the child. Children. And the children. Mm -hmm. and, and and you say you don't have the resources to, to purchase insurance. That's correct. Mm -hmm. We run into it all, all the, the time, time, Pastor. All the time. And I've talked to wow. I've talked to my siblings, so y'all know I have a lot. I yeah, said, six, I, it was sixteen of them. She eight said. boys, and eight girls. I said I love my nieces and nephews, but do me a favor: don't leave me children with no money, because I'm the I'll take care of anybody's child. I'm that's what I'm known for. But I would take care of them a lot better <laughs> with some money. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yes. And, and, and what most people also also on, on, on that uh, that graph that we showed earlier. Uh, is that most people don't have life insurance on their children. No, they, no, don't, they don't have it. Because we assume that our children are going to outlive us. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Well, we know in our community, we've seen far we've too seen many babies too die, right. far too many young people die, and uh, literally at, at that age, my, oh, my son who's 29, well, was 29 when I did, did his adult policy, 25 when I did his adult policy, I was spending $29 for 150000 So why is a mother crying? and doing a fish fry to bury her young man went for $29. And see, that's, that's where the responsibility comes from. Wow. In. Yes. And, 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 and again, this is about financial literacy. Yes. Giving you information so that, that you will know, hey, listen, there, there, there might be a better way of doing this thing. Yes. You know? And, and it's not, it, and it's cost efficient. Yes. Yes. So all I got to do is just, just tap into the, the knowledge that people like you have. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we're here we're for. one of the few companies that allows a person to start an investment with $25 and $50 a month. The average investment, investment company savings. would laugh at you, right? <laughs> they don't even sit down with you unless you have $100,000. Wow. And we're allowing individuals with $25, $50 a month to start investment. So there's no reason not to do it faster. And, 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 and let, me, let me throw this twist in there, Karen and, and Mary. Uh, uh, then those pastors of you who are watching today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, yeah. You need to make sure that you have life insurance. Maybe yes. instead of buying a designer suit. Yes. You know, yeah. you might need to invest that suit money into mm -hmm. a policy that yeah. will help and benefit your family. Yes, That's absolutely. True. Even even for the um, parishioners or the your church. congregation, mm -hmm. you know, instead of giving alligator shoes or a suit, maybe we could decide that we want to make sure that Ooh. the first lady... Karen, Karen, you better, you better touch a nerve around here. <laughs> go ahead on, go ahead on, Karen, go ahead on. We might want to make sure that the first lady and the children are provided for yes. if our beloved pastor that served us for 25, 30, 40 years, right? Yes. She shared her husband with the church for 25, 30, 40 years, make sure that that family is provided for. Yes. I think, do you think that, am I overstepping no, when no, I say no, you owe that? We owe that to the pastor. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> did, did, did you? She said. She said after a pastor served for twenty five years. Yeah. You know, the wife and the children don't even have enough. Don't have. Don't, no. Don't to have sustain enough. their lives after no. after doing ministry for that long. So exactly. so even pastors. I, I, I say that because I've talked to pastors, and, and and most pastors are more concerned about the suit, the car, and all that instead of long term life insurance. Right. And and it's only because they haven't been taught. Yeah. This is not something that was taught in our community. Uh, the guy that actually uh, in, in, in my organization has a P, was working on a PhD, 
and he was so impressed because he never saw the concepts that our company teaches after going through that much many years of school. He said, if I don't know this, I know the average person doesn't wow. know this. And so we're not, you know, we're not blaming our people for not having it. We're saying you were not given the information that you needed to make the right choices that you that you could make. So that we know the old adage is when I know better, I do better. Do better. So that's what we try to do here on what's happening in our neighborhood, to, to give you information so that you can do better. Because Absolutely. listen, we we all want you to be successful. Yes. We all want you to have long, long life. But hey, listen, life at some point, it yes. ends. Yes. But you need to make sure, look, I, I told them in the back, I say, my, my wife and children, they gonna celebrate. I told them they need to cry a lot of tears. They need to cry a lot of tears, but, but after they get back in the limo, they need to say, whoa! That's exactly he never said it for life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's the, uh, I don't know if we covered everything we needed to cover, but we call it the last love letter. Okay. We call, when we take care of our families as men and women, it's the love that we have that makes us provide for them. Yeah. Well, that life insurance benefit is the last love letter you will ever write to your wife. Honey, I loved you when I was here, and I'll love you eternally, Ooh, and I'll good. make sure that you're provided for whether I'm dead or alive. And that woman, I mean, I hear it, I see it all the time. They're grieving. It doesn't make you happy when you get the money, but it sure makes you secure. And what more can you do for a family than to leave them in with the last love letter? So, 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 so if you say you love me, you know, then you need to leave me set. Yeah, <laughs> is that what you? Is yeah. that what you said, Karen? If you love me, you better leave me set. Look, look, I, I, tell, I have to tell this story. I did a seminar at a church at a at a. Um, it was a marriage retreat, you know, a marriage couples uh, seminar. And so the woman was there, and her husband couldn't make it. So when I got to the house, I'm talking to the husband about life insurance and the wife about life insurance. He's like, I don't think I need that much. So she turns around and go, So you're saying you don't love me? Wow. <laughs> because she heard the last love letter. So Wow. Right, but it really is the truth. If we love them, we, we provide for them. And, and, okay, but, but that's just not for the man, it's for right. his wife. That's right. You know, the wife needs to make sure that she's covered Absolutely. too. Absolutely. I'm so glad you brought that up, Pastor, because I actually delivered a death claim to my sister's husband. And of course, when I was doing the insurance as a sister, I thought I was taking care of my sister, okay? But if they had six children and a lot of debt, and you know, so they got the policy. Look, reluctantly. Because she's like, we don't need that much insurance, Carol. Look what she told me. You just want to make a sale. I said, sis, this is not about a sale. I promise you, you wow. have six children, a house note, and if he dies, you will be struggling with these six children. And so they did get the policy, and I ended up providing that death claim, sliding that check over to my brother-in-law, and he thanked me. He said, thank you for what you did for my family. Wow. I paid off my mortgage. I gave the children money. I paid off all the debt. Karen, we are in. She, he said, my sister, you know, I don't need to say her name, left us in a good place. So it's not always the men that die. Right. You know, and most people plan to, if, if, if you don't plan mm -hmm. right now, then really what you're doing is you're planning to fail. Exactly right. You're planning to fail without having a plan. You're putting yourself in position. If we just look at how our parents lived and died and our grandparents one of my recruits say why are black people always doing the reset button when somebody Ooh. dies we got to reset <laughs> that's, a, that's good stuff there hit that, hit that red reset button <laughs> you know he said but in other in other communities when they die they're set the families are set. That's how you get old money in a family. That's how you get the because, old money. Because, you know, grandma left us a couple of million, grandpa then left us a couple, and mama left us straight. But in our family, we hitting, reset, we gotta start all over again. Wow. And it just has to stop. <laughs> At some point, it has to stop, y'all, and for me, being one of 16, I said I wanted it to stop here, for me and my children, and my sisters <laughs> and my brothers bought into that, and we decided no more resetting. No we more reset. No, no more reset. Ooh, that, I'm that, one that, of eight, so no more reset. That no more re that, See, that's preachable. That no more reset. You, how are <laughs> so you? Like, no more resets. I'm gonna get this thing right right now. Yes. Woo! So yes. you need to start planning right now. Yes. Absolutely. We do what you're looking at too. I want to just mention that we do a complimentary financial need analysis. That's good. That's good. Okay. And that financial need analysis gives you a budget page, so you can start budgeting your money and start giving the ten percent that you should be giving. <laughs> just thought I just <laughs> took that. Give your ten percent. <laughs> That's right. And your offer, your time, and your, and your offer. offer, right? <laughs> and if you budget more, you'll be able to do Ooh. that. It also looks at um, where your debt is going. And we show people how to pay their debt off sooner, just with yeah. a debt stacking program. Um, how to save for college, how to save for retirement and how to manage your man and that's free financial no, no, planners no. charge 750 to 1500 to do that oh, hold up hold up see 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 y'all y'all gonna miss this thing 
So normally it's about 750 yes, it, to exactly. 1500 exactly. And but we do it free. You do it absolutely. F R E E. Free and me do agree. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. So so B I S T told you so. <laughs> Of course. So, so, so it's absolutely free. It's, it's absolutely free. free. And wow. what I tell people, what goes on at the table stays, stays at, at the, the table. table. That means it's also confidential. So, so nobody else to know your business. Exactly. No one else. Now, now Mary, you said that earlier about people not wanting others to know their, their financial status. In our community, they do not want us to know their financial status. And it's sad because we cannot sit down at a table and find out their information and then leave that table and run and go tell no, someone. Can't. Not because you want to keep your license. We, have, we are licensed by the state. <laughs> I need and keep my license. Okay, I want to keep my license. And it's, it's, it's and a so, simple, it, excuse me, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's a simple thing. We use a GPS to get where we, where we want to get, right? Right, The right. first thing the GPS asks, where is your location? Yeah. So in order for me to get yeah. you where you want to go, need to I need to, to know, know where you are. are. Uh. So and we just take help you on that trip you want to go on for future you. Take me to the millionaire status. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. It would absolutely. be awesome that to see our people in our community to rise to that. Okay, okay, and okay. it's free. My goodness, this is absolutely free, man. Look, this is this this has been great today. So so so, Mary and Karen, how if if, if people who are watching today want to, to get in contact with you to find out more information? How can they get in contact with you? Okay, okay uh, I can give you my name and my number. Uh, number one, uh, I'm on Facebook, Mary Citizen. Uh huh. Um, and look, look, we're gonna do my office. We're gonna, we're gonna office do your, in Houston. We're gonna do your service. We're gonna put it right. See, it just popped up on the screen right there. We're gonna put it right there on the screen so that you can get in contact with both of them. Oh, and, uh, oh thank and, you. Yeah, yeah. That way Good. you don't have to remember all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> So, so we put both of their information right there on the bottom of your screen. You see it right there. Okay. All you have to do is get in contact with them, and they will help you get yourself set for the future. Yeah. That, that's what's so good about this. It, it's you got to think long term. Absolutely. Yes. Is Mary's phone number on the screen? Yeah, well? yeah. Both both okay. of your numbers okay. are on, on the screen. Okay. So, so, so we'll have it there uh, for them to, to to get in contact with both of you. And uh, again, we want to thank them for coming today and talking to us about this financial literacy because it is so important. Yeah. You know, at, at, listen, really, you, you should give your tithe and your offerings to your local church. Whatever local church you belong to, you ought to give your tithe and your offerings to them and then work off the 90%. Mm -hmm. And yeah, once right. you start living off the 90%, they, they can show you how to budget, how to pay yourself first, how to eliminate your debt, take care of your mortgage, get insurance. Those things are vitally important for you to be successful and your family to be successful yeah. for the long term. Like they said, no more resetting. No Let's more not reset. start where we started from the past. Let our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren start at a greater level than what we started at. Yeah. So again, I want to thank Mary and Karen for coming today to talk to us about this financial literacy. And I want to thank you for joining us today on What's Happening in Our Neighborhood. And we will see you next time thank on you. our broadcast. Thank, thank you. you.